once a month, uh, we get a chance to speak to those within York County government. We're always excited to have Greg Suskin. He is the public information officer for York County, and he's joining us here on Palmetto Mornings. Good morning to you, Greg. Morning, and I do appreciate the excitement, but this is also what happens when I forget at the very, very last minute to book a better county guest than me, and you get stuck with the PIO, so you're oh, welcome. God. Greg, we don't need to tell them how the sausage is made. But, oh, always. That's but, transparency. I know. It's what I'm all about now. But on this show, we sh- we tell people everything. There have been times on this show that we have lost our train of thought and said, we don't know where we're going right we now. We have no idea. But people appreciate of course they do. being authentic, and I agree. Listen, yes. You can set them up yeah. for, for like you always do. So you hit it out of the park for you, Greg, because you have a lot try. going well, on. The pressure's we'll, on now for sure. So. We'll take up for you a little bit. You, you've had a busy two last two weeks. So yes, it has needless been. to say, you've got you're pushing out a lot of information to you know uh, residents here in York County about the storms that rolled through almost two weeks ago, a microburst. Now we get to introduce a new word into our vocabulary. Microburst. A macro, macro burst uh, that came through. And I know we had Chuck Haynes from York County Mm -hmm. Emergency Management come on here, Greg, and he basically explained it to us. Like the the damage was a lot. It wasn't wasn't enough to meet the threshold for like – uh, federal assistance and state assistance, so we're really in a weird gray area. But there's the county and others are trying to still find pockets of money, and I'll kind of let you explain it from yeah, there. Yeah, that's true, and actually uh, what you said about not meeting the threshold is what we think is going to happen as far as FEMA goes, but yet FEMA's here. Yeah. Uh, they were here yesterday um, meeting with our emergency management officials and taking a tour around the damaged area. They're back today to continue to do that a little bit longer, um, and they had, I think— think three people from FEMA and two people from the SBA, the, the uh, Small Business Association, were here um, looking at the damaged area. And I think they, the impression I got is it was more extensive than they thought it was going to be. Uh, they spent a lot of time touring. Now, again, FEMA's standard is typically 100 homes destroyed for federal help. And it may not be a hard and fast number, but just something you've got to be close to. And that's not what our assessment has found. But, you know, it's standard procedure for FEMA to come in. Our emergency management folks called them, said, hey, come on, take a look. They have. Again, they're spending a second day here doing that. So um, it's a slow process. We don't expect, you know, an answer tomorrow. It may be a couple of months. But at least they're here, you know, doing their due diligence, taking a look at what the storm left behind, which I think really surprised a lot of people at how severe it turned out to be, particularly, you know, there on the south side of Rock Hill. Well, if it's surprising to FEMA a little bit, again, you can see the pictures and yeah. the video, but when you see it with your own eyes, it, it is a different experience. And even the the gentleman from the National Weather Service said, this is kind of uncharted territory Bizarre. for us. And what we are seeing here is what we typically see out in the Midwest with some of the damage. Uh, I'm shocked, though, that we haven't hit the 100 count, that threshold and I wonder if it's just within a radius they're looking at, because I would imagine from commercial buildings to residential, there's damage. It just depends what you define as damage. Right. And for them, it's destroyed. destroyed. So that means uninhabitable. Leveled. Oh, okay. Un- le- leveled or uninhabitable, okay. unusable, that sort of thing. So destroyed is the terminology. It sounds kind of a vague word, but FEMA's got very, very specific guidelines with that. Damage, I think we figured up. I put out a release the other day. I think the it was... 317, I haven't looked at it yet, 317, 417, something like that. It's hundreds of homes and businesses with, with significant sense. damage. I've driven through a lot of those neighborhoods. It just, you know, they just, they look terrible. Just, oh. it's so sad to see. But destroyed is a different standard. So, Greg, we've seen so many different a- agencies, businesses roll up their sleeves to help those impacted. Um, sometimes when you have a lot moving around, some people might think that. Um, they're taking care of this person or that person. And there's some people that kind of get lost in, in the shuffle. So at this point, if people are listening, if they're still struggling with maybe insurance questions, if they've got still questions for the, the county in general and or need help with services to remove maybe a still a downed tree or a tarp on a roof or anything like that, what what's the advice for those listening today moving forward? No, and that's good that you mentioned that because sometimes after some time goes by, you feel like, well, everybody's had this work done. Everybody's property has been surveyed. Everybody's had someone come along and take limbs out of their yard. But we were through there yesterday and saw houses that still had trees down right at the house and stuff was not brought to the curb. So, yeah, that what we said initially was if you have storm-related questions that are not about removing debris, but you mentioned insurance or just other general things, our emergency management folks, Chuck Haynes and his staff, they're taking calls. That's 326-2300. 
And so they're taking general storm calls, and we still have the number up for general help, which is through uh, which is through uh, uh, crisis recovery. I'm trying to think of the name of the group. It's crisis something. It's been on our website for <laughs> yes. uh, for days. But um, that group, which is eight zero three two five zero three six seven nine. Um, is sort of like a clearinghouse that can connect people to any of the volunteer groups, whether it's the Southern Baptist Convention, Samaritan's Purse. Uh, there's lots of local groups here that, that they will take uh, different jobs, go to different homes, and help people move that stuff to the curb and tarp roofs if that's still needed. Because you, you would kind of think as this has gotten out and it's been so big in the news that everybody's gotten that sure. attention, that but helps. they all haven't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, please call. It, it, no question is a dumb question. I mean, obviously, sure. you've got three journalists in this room who – you know, make oh, well, a living. you counted me as one. Oh, yeah, Thank yeah. you. Well, you make a living asking questions, and you know we've yeah. always been raised and taught there's no such thing as a dumb question. It might be obvious to everyone else, but if it's not obvious to you, chances are it's probably not obvious to someone else. But don't sit there and, and think no one cares or they're not paying attention. Just ask the question and get connected because it's – Or don't it, wait for them to call you well, and a, reach out to you. That's another it's, good point. There's too much going on. That's true. And then, Greg, remind us too again, I know uh, the county has relaxed some of the um, uh, the deadline for folks to put um, debris right. and stuff along the curbs or at the collection recycle centers. Yeah, at this point, there's really kind of two dates. One is May 6th, and that is the date that both the city of Rock Hill and the county want to have everybody's debris on the curb. That's Monday, um, by the that way. That's Monday, okay. yes. So the 6th. So that way, either on the 6th or shortly after, depending on how long it takes them to get through these neighborhoods, it's uh, largely DOT trucks that will be coming by doing kind of a last sweep, getting up a lot of this debris. So that's that one date. The second day is May 9th, and that is the date that um, we're waiving all fees for the landfill for brush up until that point. So a lot of people said, hey, I didn't realize we have to pay to bring stuff to the landfill. Only if you go over 2,000 pounds a month, which – most people don't do, but it, yeah. Yeah, so normally just bring in a load of brush, you're not charged. If you go over 2,000 pounds a month, you have to pay, but until May 9th, you don't. All fees are waived to bring brush uh, to the landfill from, from anywhere in this area, so in well, the county. Well, it's been great uh, to see the folks uh, in our community rally around those that, that need help the most. We appreciate like the list of numbers and just that clear communication there on where to Point people because people have called up here before, and we want to point them in the right direction. And you also have to be sadly aware of people who are looking for a scam. They'll see any opportunity to scam you, and again, that general uh, hotline number can maybe help you wade through. They can help you wade through some of those questions uh, for sure. Greg Suskin is the public information officer with York County Government. Greg, we have our new county manager already here, Josh Edwards. He has hit the ground running. He's been here for a couple of weeks now. And what's that been like so far for folks uh, there at the uh, admin building and beyond? It's been great. As we mentioned a couple of seconds ago before we went on the air, he made the statement that he feels like he's been drinking from the fire hose. And it really is true because when you're county manager over 1,200 employees roughly and you've got to oversee all these – not just that, you've got to learn who everybody is, what they do, how this place func- functions differently from where he was down in Athens, Georgia – so, yeah, he is he's running around a lot, meetings with all these people. I get a chance to see him every once in a while and say, hey, help, help him catch his breath, you know. <laughs> and it's going to be that way for a while. He's yeah. got yeah. a council meeting coming up this Monday. It's going to be a lengthy meeting, so he'll be diving headfirst into dealing with county council and, mm-hmm. and upcoming issues for the county as well. So. Yeah. Well, you shared earlier, I think we can all respect and appreciate that he is going above and beyond to get to know everybody, you specifically learning about, you know, what you all do and wanting to be a part of it. And I think that makes your job easier. And for us, it's transparency. It's the accountability that we get to see what's going on behind the scenes. So we're tooting your horn, Greg, but it's good that he is wanting to be a part of the good work you're doing. Thank you. And he's a planner. Yeah. He sat down and said, I'm a numbers guy. I'm a planner. He's all about strategy. So he's going to be a policies, procedures guy. want to make sure things are, you know, I's are dotted, T's are crossed, all that stuff. And uh, he's coming in with a lot of ideas, and uh, we, we certainly wish him the best and are glad he's here. And, Greg, do we know uh, yet any kind of movement or update on the county's lawsuit with the city of Rock Hill and where we stand on that? I have not heard anything, Lucas. I've not heard anything on that in months. Um, I know it was it was removed from the docket. I think for a year, I believe was the last court document I saw on that. But it it doesn't that does not mean dropped. Mm-hmm. So the last I've heard, there has not been any movement or change of note um, okay. on that lawsuit. 
We'll continue to follow that as well as all the other agenda items that are happening within York County. And if you uh, do not sign up for all the videos that Greg and his uh, talented coworker Josh Stender, they will put together, uh, please sign up for those. Those are quick little snippets that will kind of update you on what's going on in the county kind of weekly, as well as some other big issues that are just uh, impacting where we live, work, and play. Greg Suskin is the public information officer with York County Government. Greg, as always, sir, we appreciate the conversation. Thank you so much. I do, too. Thank you. Thank Thank you both.